Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Hell Money Podcast. <laughs> I'm joined today, as always, by uh, my lovely co-host, uh, Aaron Boop, and uh, special guest, uh, French Montana. Uh, welcome to the up, uh, Hell Money Podcast. What's up, Casey? You good? Yeah, we're good. Yeah, very good. We're at a uh, undisclosed location undisclosed. in New York. Yeah, definitely. French Montana's uh, palatial residence, <laughs> yeah, yeah. somewhere above the clouds yeah, in somewhere New York above City. The, yeah, no phones working here. Mm-mm. Absolutely not. Uh, nah, no phones. <laughs> so this is yeah. definitely the first uh, the first celebrity guest we've had on the, on the podcast. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. we've had Bitcoin celebrities. Yeah. But these are the kind of people who are just like mega nerds that yeah. are celebrities among other okay, okay. mega nerds. They're okay. really like celebrities to Casey. Like, I feel like that's actually yeah. what it is. is most oh, okay. of our guests are people that like Casey's like, oh, my God, I want to talk to that person so badly. And then yeah. like. Maybe he's the person who cares the most in the world that we <laughs> talked about. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> I'm in love with y'all world, you know? So I'm really curious about this. How did you, like, when did you first hear about Bitcoin? Um, well, I heard about Bitcoin since, since I think it was my boy from Empire, mm -hmm. Ghazi from Empire, if I'm not mistaken. He just came to me one day in the studio. He's like, yo, you need to invest in Bitcoin. And he mm -hmm. walked out. So, uh, I knew, okay, yeah. <laughs> so I knew it was serious. I knew it was... He was he. That was some serious shit. So we can curse on him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. whatever uh, you want. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, just like to know, you know, you might be airing somewhere where there's a lot of gospel or something like that. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, but uh, it, was, it was it was a friend of mine named Gazi, and he just walked in the studio. He just said it with such passion. I was like, this is some serious shit going on here. Mm -hmm. So ever since then, so probably like around the same time, like thirteen, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, a little before that. Mm -hmm. And so like. How among people you know, like what do people think about Bitcoin? Do they kind of understand it? Like, do they know about it, or they, is it still like um, barely on their radar? I think that a lot of people got scared just due to the last roller coaster that happened, and uh -huh. everybody took their money out. Yep. And even now, when I got a lot of friends that, when as soon as they went up to thirty, forty, they was like, "We cashing out. Like, we don't know what's gonna happen next." Mm -hmm. So a lot of people was not educated like you on it. You know what I'm saying? Some people just did it for like the. They don't. They don't see the marathon run on it. So a lot of people just, just you know, either had their money in it, or they just did it for a quick flip, and they don't. They don't really have no, um, you know, no knowledge really about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think. I mean, I feel like once you've once you've kind of gone through that cycle like a couple times, it's like, I don't even. I don't even look at the price really at this point. Like I do just to be like, oh man, it's back up to. But it's not something that I yeah, like is on and, my radar like as and much. Also, I think it's because my 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 a lot of my friends that did take their they don't know who to call if they lose their money. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the thing with Bitcoin. There's like there's nobody to call, right? There's yeah. no there's no customer support hotline. Yeah. There's I, no like fraud protection. Like, yeah. You send no, Bitcoin, it's gone. There's no insurance on your money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like I mean I think that's the pro and the con of it. Right. Is like, you know, I think if you think about why is Bitcoin important or why is it interesting, it's because like there's no higher government entity that can yeah. bail you out. Right. Like yeah, if you fuck up, you fuck up. It is what it is. And it's mm -hmm. kind of an even playing ground. For yeah. That, and you right? got like top five people that got the most Bitcoin on Earth. One of them name is the hackers. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. it's like so you're looking at your money. And you're like, yo. Is this like just the magnet that just keep hacking everybody? It's just like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when you see names like that, and you're like, and I, and I heard a lot of stories about people who can never get into the wallet. Back oh yeah, for sure. I have a friend of mine. He mined Bitcoin like maybe 2012, and he had a hard disk with 640 Bitcoin on it that he threw away. It was what? worth yeah, like back in the day when he threw it away, it was worth like 50 bucks. What? Yeah, and now it's like gone forever. And he's like, he's he's not the richest dude in the world. He's not happy about that. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, what's that? That's like... What was the craziest story? you probably seen it all. What was the craziest one? Oh, I mean, like, that was the craziest one that I know, that I know personally. I yeah. know another dude, he, um, he, he mined, like, thousands of Bitcoin, like, tens of thousands of Bitcoin. He threw the hard disk away in a, uh, like, a landfill. What? Yeah, and he's like... I, I think that he's like trying to get it out of the landfill. Like he's literally wow. like digging through it like bit by bit. Yeah, because wow. it's worth like, you know, a multiple billions of dollars. Like it's actually worth it to like buy that landfill for like a 10% chance that that's you can get that money. Crazy. Yeah, it's pretty wacky. It's, it's wacky. the Wild West. Yeah, it's yeah. the Wild West. I think that's really like the answer. Yeah, you it's know? Wild Wild West. And it's just like it's no guaranteed you lose it. Well, like the thing is, is that people get kind of confused. Like when they hear people 
when they hear somebody losing Bitcoin because of a hack, they think like, oh, does that mean that like it's Bitcoin anytime can get hacked, right? Yeah. But it's it's never Bitcoin itself that gets hacked. Yeah. It's always a like a custodian, mm -hmm. like a exchange or some service that's holding people's Bitcoin, or just like shitty wallet software. Yeah. Somebody writes wallet software with a bug in it, and then your coins get drained. But Bitcoin itself is extremely secure. Uh, right, like the actual Bitcoin like the blockchain network. Is, yes. is, yeah, the blockchain is, but it's still, it's still a scary thing not to be able to call customer service. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like nobody. Like at least you could, at least let it be a big brother there, like somebody that owned the most. No, no big brother. Like, I, keep, no, I tell him no. that. I'm like, I'm like, I just want like a wise man who yeah. like protects the Bitcoin like, in yeah, my brother, town. I just lost everything. Can I get like 10 percent back? You like you own the most something. It's, it's very interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's very like the drug game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How so? And, How's and it like the drug game? Because if if you have drugs mm -hmm. and you lose the shipment, yeah, you're not calling like the government. Nine one one. Nine one one. What's your emergency? Yeah, somebody stole my crack. <laughs> it's it's one on one drug game. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? There's nobody to call. You lose it. All you could do is go back and trying to get it back. It's like it's one on one that. Uh huh. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And there's and and you. You know, you're not paying taxes. You don't pay taxes on drugs. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's no, kind of well, it's funny. The IRS encourages people to pay taxes on their drugs. You can you can say like yeah, I made this okay, money yeah, selling uh, drugs because <laughs> like, as long as they get the taxes. As hey, as long Uncle, get the taxes. hey, Uncle Tom, I just sold one thousand bricks of cocaine. <laughs> I'd like to give you a hundred million because I have another shipment coming in. That <laughs> man, nobody paying no taxes. On <laughs> How but, is? Has Bitcoin made any inroads into like hip hop culture at all? Yeah. Yeah. Like how? Um, I think that a lot of artists. I just saw Ghostface. Um, Ghostface shot, Killer. Yeah, yeah. Shout the Ghostface Killer. I just saw him put a um, put um, subscribe one of his songs into the um, um, Bitcoin block. I know. I saw. Did you see? He inscribed. I, I, yeah. What did he inscribe? A song, right? Yeah, yeah a song. Was yeah. it a four megger? Yeah, it was it was a four, it was a full block. Yeah, like, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. So he it's definitely crazy. did it. So it's just right now it's just the idea and it's just something that you, like it's like a soldier boy move. It's like yeah, I want to be the first to do it. I want to be the second to do it. Because mm -hmm. it's like you never know. Just like when Bitcoin first came out, people were still like trying to figure out where is it going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and they have a lot to do with the industry. Mm -hmm. That there is money, but we can fractions of a penny. Mm -hmm. From um, from the industries to put out you our mean music, like the streaming industry. Yeah, yeah, the streaming. How industry. much like so you you stream on like Spotify and yeah. everything like that. Yeah, yeah. How much do you make? Like how many streams of one of your songs has to? How many streams for you to get like a hundred dollars? To get, first of all, for one song, mm -hmm. for one song to count as one sale, you need to stream. Fifteen hundred times to even get to the threshold to where to get to one one song ninety nine cents. So somebody had to listen to it fifteen hundred times uh -huh. to count as one sale. Oh, and I see. Compared to <clears throat> selling it, yeah. On what, like, what do you mean count as one sale? So before when we used oh, to oh like for for like a platinum record. No, 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 no. Okay, no. this is this is just one, uh -huh. and, and you need five hundred thousand. No, that's what I mean. Is that like for something for you to get a platinum record? So when you we need five hundred thousand sales. Yeah. So then you need five hundred thousand times fifteen hundred. Yeah. For that to count as exactly. like a platinum record. So when, so when we was first putting put out music, it's inflation, bro. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Inflation. This is the fiat system that we're trying to. <laughs> Destroy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so when we when we was first putting out music before the streaming era, uh -huh. it was people buy it off iTunes, so it counted as one. So it wasn't you needed somebody right. to hear it 1,500 times. So you uh -huh. just go to iTunes, you buy it. There wasn't no Spotify or no nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, you get it from from Apple, this and that. Now it's all streaming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's still people that buy, but why people gonna buy when they can just go stream it? You know? What what percentage of your sales or like yeah, what percentage of your sales come from people like buying MP3s mm -hmm. versus streaming on Spotify? Well, buying MP3 is somebody could buy it one time, it's like somebody heard it fifteen hundred times. Right, right, right. So you always want to go for the when, when somebody could buy it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> also, it's just um, as far as as far as the streaming is. Let me see how can I how can I um, 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 put it. It's like the streaming just came and fucked everything up, mm -hmm. you know. Because nowadays, 
your album, you could have a billion streams on a song. Like, for example, Unforgettable, my song. Mm -hmm. Half of the world streamed it. It have over four billion mm -hmm. streams. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, it, it only equaled up to 12 million sales, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Back in the days, it would have been like, you know, it would have been like the biggest record to ever come out on, on you know, on Earth. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. and as far as money, it depends on how much you own mm -hmm. of your um Like your work. intellectual property, right? Yeah, so yeah. if you're an independent artist, there's independent artists that do an 80-20 split, 90-10 splits, what they, what they label, right? Um, Were there 20 or 10? Or yeah, the, yeah, I, right. I mean, it, 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 it go either way. Yeah. Um, um, with the major labels, they do it where they give you 10, 20% royalties, mm -hmm. you know, of, of, of your thing. When you're an independent artist, it's harder, but you give them 10, 20, 10, 20%. Sure. You know, and you do it like that. So when you, me, I, I own 100%. Mm -hmm. So I don't give the label nothing. How did, how did you, yeah, how did how you, did you manage, manage that? that? <laughs> so I saw an artist do it. I thought it was impossible, mm -hmm. but I saw an artist do it and I called them. I was like, yo, you know, how, how did you do that? He was like, hey, this is how you do it. So I called, I called this label that I wanted to get with. I was like, look, I'm going to let you use my name because I know that's how they're going to get all new artists to sign to their label. I said, I'm going to let you use my name. <clears throat> I don't want no money from y'all. Mm -hmm. And y'all can sign whoever y'all want. I don't want no, no, no piece from them neither. But mm -hmm. just let me put out all my music and I get 100%. Mm -hmm. So I'm probably like the second person to ever do it. Interesting. So Interesting. instead, you essentially like let them kind of like use your name, yeah. right? But you retain the rights to your music. Yeah, everything. That's interesting. Yeah, hundred percent. Why don't more artists do that? Because that's 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 a great question. A lot of artists don't do that because a lot of artists is not financially stable. Right. Yeah. 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 As an artist, you know, you want to get money. You, you know, you're making million dollars. Your first million you make, you're gonna. Uncle Sam takes half. Mm -hmm. You buy the car you always one of your dreams. It's two hundred thousand. You buy mm -hmm. two chains. It's a hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. You give your homeboy some money. You want to move your mother out, so you probably spend a hundred thousand on her house. Then mm -hmm. you know put down payment. Then you got to pay keep paying. Yep. So by before you know it, you got about fifteen thousand dollars left in your pocket. Mm -hmm. And and, <laughs> yeah. and you know if you're an artist that can make music and maintain it, then you'll make the money. But the, the the biggest part is not making the money, is maintaining the money. And me, when I came into the game and I was caught in one of those situations, I never looked at it as 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 um, me staying in it. I looked at it as just let me capitalize and save my money mm -hmm. and sacrifice for now until I get in position where I got enough money to fight the war. Why Clef told me one day he was in the studio, he's, he's putting out his music himself. And I'm like, <clears throat> he was like, He was like, bro, look, you signed just now. You signed, drop a couple albums and save your money because one day the label is not going to be there and you got to really go fight your own war. I never really understood it. But then once I lost, I mean, once I sold so many records mm -hmm. and I did my math and I gave the label so much money, mm -hmm. you know, I was like, you know, this is time for me to finally own something that I could leave my son, that I could leave people, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. to make money off of the, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. Just so many, like you hear stories like this all the time, like guys make, you know, millions of dollars, yeah. like artists, like basketball players, <clears throat> et cetera. And they're yeah. just like, nobody tells them that like, look, you got to save your money. You know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, like a friend of mine got $80 million. He was so young, 20, 20 something years old. I spoke to him the other day. It's been three years. He's down to five million. Mm -hmm. Damn. And he's not even playing football no more. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and he's still flying girls from islands and this. And I'm like, yo, bro, like, listen, dude. I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm like, yo, bro, you're like, you Rochelle. know, you, you can't go back to a regular job. Like, what are you doing? Like, invest, you know. And like, that's that, that's the mentality of, of of artists. That's why there's <clears throat> longevity artists and there's artists that just come and go. Like, yeah, yeah, every yeah, year, yeah. you just see somebody come. Yeah. They catch a record. Next year, they out. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's interesting. Like, I mean, yeah, the crossover between like hip hop and rap and crypto. It's like if you look at like you know musicians, artists, whatever that are coming over into crypto. A yeah. lot of them are hip hop and rap, <clears throat> yeah. and I feel like it's a similar kind of thing. Where like what you're describing, it's like I see that all the time in crypto yeah. too. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like a similar kind of like 
you make a lot of money. Crypto is a bigger industry, you, right? Yeah. 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 Then how, how, how much money is in crypto? Altogether. Oh, it's hard to say. It's hard to say because it's also. It's got to be like. Right. Tr- but, you could, but you just look at the top, like, a few, top ten. A few yeah, trillion. A few trillion. I would guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, Bitcoin's market cap is above. Is it above a trillion? I think it's like above a trillion. Yeah. At, or like, close. 50, at like 50K, it's at a trillion. Yes. Is that right? I think that's Something right. Something like yeah. that. And then probably the other cryptos. There's something called the the Bitcoin Dominance Index. Yeah. So that is the percentage of all of crypto that is Bitcoin, wow. which started out at 100%. Yeah. Right. And it fluctuates over time. I think now we're around like 50% Bitcoin dominance. Yeah, it's coming back, baby. Yeah, it's, it's coming back. <laughs> yeah, and the music been making about 13 billion a year for like 13 billion a year. Yeah. Wow. So actually, crypto <clears throat> is much bigger. Yeah. yeah. That's bizarre. Exactly. I mean, it makes sense. It's financialization versus like art. Right. At the end of the day, right. like like. And the biggest, the biggest artists in the music industry, were probably, which I know for a fact. The biggest artist right now deal was five hundred million. This is the biggest artist, mm-hmm. right? And Which I, artist? <clears throat> and I know, probably Drake. Uh huh. Five hundred, six hundred million was probably his deal was. I don't, I don't know. Don't, don't, don't quote me word for word, but mm-hmm. it's around there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which he worked really hard for, you know. So I don't know what type of deal he did, <clears throat> but if he signed a deal like that, which he doesn't get that money every year, right? Right. So you figure he got it now, and he got to wait like three to four years, or, 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 or as fast as he can recoup, mm-hmm. or give them enough material for them to give him another one. So you figure if he just get that one year, then the the second biggest deal probably will be four hundred million. Then after that, be three hundred million. After yeah. that, be. A, but most artists are, is getting is in the tens. Right. It's not that many artists in New York. There's probably like two, three artists. And 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 they deals is not that big, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And yeah. um, down south is not it's not that many artists. So there's not artists are not getting no money mm-hmm. out of the 13 billion that's made every year. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah, this is all the system owning everybody catalog and mm-hmm. owning. You know what I'm saying? Like we 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 see a fraction of that. Yeah, I'm very surprised. I mean, you know, it you know back you know 30, 40, 50 years ago, the record labels. They controlled distribution, yeah. right? There was an actual physical work that went into distributing. You had to press records. You, you had to get them in stores, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. These days, like anybody has, like you, you can get professional level recording equipment very cheaply. Yeah, you can you can set up a home studio. You can yeah, record. You can get your music out there. Yeah, the music is easy as people people was like that. It was you know it's harder now. I think it's the easiest now because now yeah. Yeah. you right now we could just upload this and sell it as a song right now. I mean yeah right we have professional recording, <coughs> recording yeah, 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 right, yeah. right, yeah, right now right. we just upload this straight. But it's to, bi- it's bizarre that the 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 record label still takes so much right. You would assume that it would have gotten a, a little bit more democratized. Yeah and 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 it's the mafia you know because mm-hmm. and and honestly at the end of the day. People don't even know. It's like if you're independent or you sign with them. You sign with them, you gotta remember Universal owns 30, 40 percent of Spotify. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, so they also control like the algorithm yeah. and so how much c- exposure you yeah, get. Right. So they're not yeah. just gonna give you all this money and not have a plan on how to make it back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially when you talk tens of millions. Like they can gamble on new artists and give you a couple hundred thousand and they see if you if you work. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you know they have the artist development. But they fired so many people, they don't even believe in that no more. Mm-hmm. You know, so now it's like you got to come fully equipped. And when you're going to find people that's fully equipped, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's more of the wild, wild west in the music than, than, than it is in crypto yeah. and Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's crazy. Well, I mean, even like, you know, we have this podcast, right? And we just come with our own thing. We distribute yeah. it ourselves. Like, there's no... Like, like we couldn't have, like, a talk show on TV. I mean, we could, but, you know, yeah, it would yeah. be a very if different had, experience, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, it'd be dope. <laughs> but it's nice to I be able to, to do our own thing, right? Yeah, like, it's, I think it is just such a different environment, you know, even five years ago, ten yeah. years ago, for sure. Like, yeah. it's just, yeah, I mean, I feel like even the people that I know, you know, that are musicians that, some of them, like, I know through, like, ordinals, because I think there's kind of some musicians that are yeah. that are starting to kind of, like, think about things this way as well. It's like, you know, you're expected to also have, like, a huge social media following and do yeah. all your own promotion and all of that. And it's like, well, why wouldn't I use that following to sell yeah. something directly, exactly. right? Like, from myself. If I'm already doing all that, that work. That, that's where, like, and that's where it's going. Yeah. That's where it's going. So you figure me, my first album, 
I dropped it 2013. I dropped my first album. I have popped that on my album. I have I ain't worried about nothing on my album. I have I done sold at least about 10 million records on my first album. Mm -hmm. 10 million singles. I still haven't recouped, and they only gave me a million dollars. You know, it's like it, do, it doesn't make any sense. You know what I'm yeah. saying? To the point that you you got, you got to go and audit them or something like that. Just like yo, like bro, you know how much money I just made y'all. When you go independent, you get a check every month. Every month you get a check. I just dropped two projects independent last year. I just made millions of dollars, and every month I get a check. So what does that mean when you say you dropped it independent and you get the check? Is it from actual sales? Is it from streaming? Like what? Where is that money then coming from? Um, shout out to my boy Tony, um, Vidya. I dropped it through Vidya, um, and, sh and shout out to Larry Jackson, everybody. They Gamma just bought it. <clears throat> but I was with Vidya before that, and um, what I mean by dropping it is they service it to every streaming platform. Mm -hmm. So they go to the Apples, to the, you know, to Spotify. It will go to um, Title, YouTube. So when they get distributed everywhere, you just wait, and every month you get a paycheck, mm -hmm. and it, and it all come from you, just promoting, um, um, promoting it on your Instagram, and you so. I started running into a problem when I was with the label is that I would put up my own money mm -hmm. and the, all the money go to them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all the money go to them and I put up my own money. All the money go to them. It just, once you make money and you know the business, it's suicide to stay with a label. Yeah. Mm. But then why, so I, I, I'm kind of familiar with like the way that it works, but basically like you would sign a contract for a certain number of records or a certain number of years and then what, after that expires, you kind of decide like, do I re-sign this or whatever? For people that don't understand, mm. it took me 10 years to learn this. Even when you sign a 50-50, which is the greatest artist, <clears throat> and like you would have to already have a movement and you're already selling millions of records for you to get a 50-50 split with a mm -hmm. label. If you do happen to get a 50-50 split with a label, if they let you, which you have to be very lucky, they make you think that it's 50 50. So I'll give you an advance. Let's say, like, let's say, for example, I give you a million dollars and we're 50 50. So you would think that once you put out your record, when the money coming in, y'all yeah, yeah, will get 50 50. It doesn't work like that. What happened is, if, the, if I give you a million dollars or 10 million dollars, when the money come in, 50% goes to the label. The other 50%, and I pay attention, the other 50% goes towards recoupment of your $10 million while they getting paid. Right. Mm -hmm. So the recoupment only comes out of your 50%. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> no artist knows this. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. no, no, no artist, there's like... They don't they, read the contracts. Yeah, and I, don't, and I don't speak about it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's like, you know, they, they run their thing and, you know, they might try to be like, yo, stop French from talking. Uh -huh. And this and that. <laughs> so it's like, so once it, t it took me 10 years to find it out. So if an artist getting 20%, which is a royalty deal, now I'm getting only 20%. And you give me ten million dollars, which I think is what happened to me. You recouping ten million dollars of my twenty percent, my twenty cents. So I gotta make twenty cents, make up to ten million dollars for me to recoup. Uh -huh. Why? Why are you making eighty cents of every yeah. dollar that I bring in while I'm? Do you know how long it's gonna take me to recoup? Yeah, yeah, forever. Forever. See now I understand why you're more able to under like to get Bitcoin. Than, yeah. Like, like I'm like I'm like why is it the this group is into Bitcoin? It's like yeah, because yeah, yeah. you see the 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 Ponzi that is like it, the, is the is the biggest Ponzi scheme. You know yeah, what I'm saying? At yeah. least y'all get a hundred percent of y'all work. <laughs> There's nobody to break down. You know what I'm saying? On on and y'all think well us is so much. It's almost like Casey you know in the game and signing artists to him. Like look, this is how we're gonna do. We're gonna flip this. Give me all your bitcoins. We're gonna put. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna put them right here. I'm gonna flip this for you. I'm gonna help you do this. But you know what? You take twenty percent, and I'm gonna recoup of your twenty percent of your bitcoin. It's like you would feel bad doing it. And it's to the point now. Even if you're trying to re-record your own work, your own masters, your own project, if you mm. want to re-record them, 
Taylor Swift did it. Right. And now they trying to block even that. So they they had your work for ten years already, mm-hmm. eating off of it. And, and there was there was a clause in the um a clause in the um con- contracts that mm-hmm. after ten years, yep. you 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 could re record your um your hits and put them and put them back out uh-huh. as yours. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that either. Uh-huh. You could put them out as yours. Now, after Taylor Swift did it, they want to stop it. How? Isn't it like already in the contract? No. The new contracts uh-huh. now is that you can't do it. Okay, got they it. They fixed got the it. loophole, basically. Yeah, yeah. After, yeah, after Taylor Swift came out and did $1.6 million of her old stuff. I so, mean, it's crazy. I, I feel like the Taylor Swift thing was like a huge, huge... I, I don't know. Like, maybe people don't realize that that's what that was, right? Yeah. Like, that this was like a re-recording for like... To, yeah, but to Taylor, have the... yeah, but Taylor Swift went through it. I mean, to find, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to find out that somebody is so your masters when, when you're that talented and you have no control over it. Mm. But then to also find out your father has something to do with it is even more crazy. Oh, it's hor- Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's crazy to find out your father so your, your masters with with Scooter Braun and all that. Is- but I remember when she started that, I thought she wasn't going to win. That was my first impression yeah. when she started. I was like. I was like, oh, it's a nice idea, right? Yeah. It's a nice cause that she's yeah. doing this, but it's it's just like a, it's just she's trying to process. Like, I didn't yeah. think she would actually win, and I, even beyond that, I didn't think she would actually go re-record everything. Mm. But it was kind uh, of like the greatest career move she's ever made. Yeah. You know? And it's also it's just, it's just like revenge. It's like, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, she's bigger than ever. Yeah. Do you, do you hold the copyright to all of your content? Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I do. Yeah. Did yeah. you? Do, do, is there old stuff which is still owned by labels, or did yeah, you get it's it back? old stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's still old stuff that's owned by labels. My first album, my second album, my uh-huh. third album. Does that bother you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like your art. It's yeah, like yeah, yeah, for sure. It's yeah. like you sacrifice so much. Here's one of my albums right here. Uh-huh. Went, you know what I'm saying? I went platinum, and it's just like you sacrifice so much for you to you know to get to that status, yeah. and it's like. Because you, because you, you, you didn't really know what you were signing. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. all, we all just trying to make it out the hood. Yeah. Are you allowed to perform that old work? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. You are allowed to perform it. Yeah. Which that's what they tell you. That's what the labels tell you. The labels tell you, they say, well, you're 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 able to perform. We don't make no money off of it. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And so how come like you don't let us keep all this all this money that's coming off the music? Mm-hmm. You know. What I'm so it's just there's no investments in the world. That's, that can beat the music investment. Like, the way they put money into us and we're able to keep bringing them money. It's been 12 years uh-huh. and they're making money of investment <laughs> they made in 2013. It's like, you're not gonna, never going to get no better return than that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so I thought it was really cool when you uh, inscribed the, uh, the song. That yeah. was dope. Like, yeah. uh, it was just very simple. The biggest block. Was it the biggest block? Yeah, yeah. Because there yeah. have been four megas. No, so so Ordinal's bot worked with what was it, Mar- Mar- Marathon, Mara, yeah. whatever, mining directly, uh-huh. and they actually got the biggest one. Nice, uh, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So, yeah. so it was really. I mean, I said this to you earlier, but you guys did a good job finding the right people to work with. Yeah, for yeah, sure, yeah. No, for definitely, sure. definitely. It was the biggest block, and I also wanted to be the first one to do it. I just want to run with that title. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna frame it one day when the, when the whole music uh, Bitcoin business get as big as it can get. So yeah. I think it's a big problem for Bit- Bitcoin particularly in like the hip hop industry and hip hop culture yeah. that bitcoin does not function as bling yeah you can't put like a necklace with bitcoin on it you can't have like bitcoin in your teeth or whatever <laughs> you can't have like a chain made out of bitcoin oh uh, it will be once once you give some artists a few checks you will see that <laughs> <laughs> they'll figure it out yeah, yeah once you get some rappers some checks off bitcoin they're all gonna have the bitcoin chain the bitcoin, <laughs> the bitcoin parties uh-huh. and, yeah it's gonna definitely go yeah but like inscriptions function as a form of bling you yeah. know what I mean you can yeah. be like yo like there's 144 blocks a day yeah. one of them was my song yeah yeah that's I think a- it, it is like the, that's the analogy I like to use for people is like if bitcoin is digital gold right which yeah. I think that is the best analogy it's like this scarce thing yeah. like gold is valued no matter you know it can be valued in US dollars or in euros or yeah. whatever like it has that that store of value mm-hmm. to it just like bitcoin Inscriptions are like gold jewelry, yeah. right? You're making something artistic yeah. and like a flex or like whatever out of that gold. Yeah, I think that's the way to think about it. And it's like and the where, flex culture is important. Where, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Where do y'all see the music going with Bitcoin? So this is, it's an interesting question for me because I'm actually among like people in quote unquote crypto. Mm-hmm. I'm, I think that the, the technology is actually very limited. I think mm-hmm. that the technology has very limited applications in the sense that I think that the important thing is Bitcoin. 
I think the important thing is like the money and mm-hmm. having like a good money that people people can trade. A lot of this other stuff, like you know, the future of media, the future of finance, the future of like video games or whatever. Yeah, Bitcoin as a technology is actually you know, pretty limited. And then all these other cryptocurrencies, Mm -hmm. like they just don't work or do anything. No. So I don't know, maybe like, uh, it's sort of as a form of like promotion. You know what I mean? A sort of like, uh, I mean, one, like why is, why is an inscription valuable? The reason that an inscription valuable is valuable is because it costs something to produce. Yeah. It's like unforgeably costly in Mm -hmm. the same way that it costs money to like mine gold out of the ground. And so when you see a chain, you know that a certain amount of value went into it. But uh, but but I think my I'm very like pessimistic about like oh are people gonna be like dropping their yeah, albums yeah. on this the is blockchain? Always how yeah. Is, though. yeah. I, mean, I think like the way I think about it is you know like the fact that it's costly to inscribe, right? Yeah. It means like if you want to be a part of that, you have to like believe in yourself enough to to pay exactly. that, right? And I think like um, a lot of the internet is very ephemeral. And what I mean Mm. by that is like, you know, you post a link and five years from now, that link's probably going to be broken, right? Like you, you think when you post something Mm -hmm. on, you know, even Spotify or Instagram or whatever, you think like, okay, I'm out, it's out there and it's there forever. Yeah. In some form, but it's very difficult to go back to things like that existed on the internet even 10 years ago, right? Like the digital sphere is, is, there's a lot of turnover and there's a lot of like broken links. What I like about Bitcoin is I think that because it's such good money, it will, I mean, I think it will succeed and it yeah. will be like a major part of the global financial system. And you get to have your your legacy essentially yeah. on that and it's preserved on that. Like yeah. I, I'm always like, my whole thing is I think of Bitcoin as being like, you know, if you look at like ancient civilizations, right? Like they built the pyramids and it's like, yeah. wow, they put all this energy into this and there's like these things inscribed on the pyramid yeah. and we mm-hmm. remember that as a part of the culture. Yeah. Yeah. I think Bitcoin is like the digital megalith. It's exactly. like, that's like our digital like society, yeah. you know? And you get to like make your etching and your marking yeah. on that that structure, right? Yeah. It's a trillion dollar railroad. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that, 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 if, that, that if you mix with, 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 with music, you you can't really see the like the potential. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just like you don't you don't you don't know how big it can get, and it's so exciting because I know there's 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 like people like Kanye, and there's mm-hmm. people like you know the Drakes, the Jay Zs that mm-hmm. you know once they see a spark, and there's like real money in it, and yeah. this and that, and you can actually you know, still be able to visit people talent on it. It's just like not a money play and it's just like it can equal up to talent in a business. I think that everybody could switch from streaming platforms or probably just add on to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just add on to that. It could just be like another like railroad like for people, you know what I'm saying, to 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 showcase their talent and make money. As far as a specific project that I would like to see, I think that doing some form of remixing would be very interesting. Yeah, because once content is in an inscription, yeah, uh, you can reference it in other inscriptions. That's what she was telling me earlier. Yeah, so you yeah. could take your song and reference it in another inscription. Yeah, uh, you could even do things like um, putting a uh, like a drum machine, like synthesis engines. Yeah. On Bitcoin, I'm gonna try that. Yeah, you should do it, and then yeah. you can create audio programmatically, and it it can be less than four megabytes. Yeah, that's maybe how you get to like full albums. Yeah, like on chain. We're gonna definitely try that one. Yeah, yeah. that would be lit. I mean, like, there's a lot of things that I wish people would do. There's. I think the audio stuff. I'm like very like I'm like trying to get people to do it because I think yeah. there's yeah. a lot of like cool stuff yeah. there. And, yeah, yeah. and that's what's fun is like you know you have your your four megabyte song and like yeah. anyone can like go to that and remix it and it's like exactly. that's it's I think it's cool like what you're saying about like being first being there like early yeah, it's like, almost like that's the, the value TikTok right thing and, and, and Instagram exactly like you can take mm-hmm. it and put it and in, 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 in remix it the way you want. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I love that about it. I think it got so much potential, man. I just want more artists to get into. It. I think it's still early. It is. I think it's really too early. I mean, really, what I was saying to you earlier, too, is like, you know, if he had known that it was going to take off when it did, he would have spent the next six months doing other things behind, like, yeah, yeah, before yeah. releasing it. So it was done. Yeah, like, when I released it, it was not, like, finished. Yeah. It was like, I had been working on it 
for about a year. I was working with Raf, this German guy who I work with, yeah. and nobody was paying attention. We'd yeah. have like Twitter spaces. Like if we, if two people no. showed up to our Twitter space, we were like, "This is awesome." Man, you're a fucking genius. <laughs> nobody man. was paying attention. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> and then <laughs> we like we were like our morale was very low. We yeah. were not happy. We we're like nobody gives a shit. Yeah. We got it just barely working. Like just barely to the point yeah. that it was working. We're like, all right, it's like ready. Like, but how, but how did it feel when you seen everything? Like, it was completely insane. I mean, it was it was like very stressful. It was very stressful. The main thing was is that the software, the software is still pretty bad. Man. So like the main piece of software he's is underselling this, himself. <laughs> it's, yeah, of course, it's got some rough <laughs> edges. The humble giant. Yeah, I don't know about that. So. <laughs> Like, it was in rough shape. So people yeah. were hitting bugs. Things were slow. Things were breaking all the time. Yeah. The software that I make is the very low-level, sort of, like, protocol-level software. Mm -hmm. And so it is not user-friendly. It is very hard for a normal person to pick it up and make an inscription or trade an inscription, mm -hmm. right? And so at the very beginning, that was all that existed. So yeah. people were, like buying laptops to sync Bitcoin full nodes that mm -hmm. takes like a week and like build this index, which takes forever, like mm -hmm. just to inscribe. So it was, it was chaos. Yeah. I was very stressed. It was not a happy period of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you reached like a, you normalized, yeah, you know? Yeah. Well, part of the one thing that helped is that I kind of like took a break for a bit. Yeah. And when I took a break, things did not fall apart. Like everything just kind of kept cruising on. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I don't have to take my own role too seriously. I don't yeah. have to freak out that I'm not able to. Perfectionist, yeah. Yeah, very much a perfectionist. Yeah. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, I think when, once people get into it, it's, it's addictive more than anything. It's like, and you get used to it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But now there's like, there's many, many different wallets. There's many, many different services. There's a huge ecosystem. So to some extent, the pressure is off. And the protocol is mostly done. Yeah. Like inscriptions, are, I don't actually think that we have any, we do not have any big plans for future features. Yeah. Wow. Like it's basically done. And that's where you want it to be because it's big to say that. What's that? I said it's big to say that. That's well, that. we'll see if, uh, if, if I come up with something, but like, so, um, like decentralization is very important. Yeah. Like all of this stuff is only valuable because it's, it's very, very decentralized. Yeah. And Bitcoin is extremely decentralized. It's mm -hmm. very hard for any one person to make changes to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And, I don't want me to be able to make big changes to ordinals and inscriptions, right? Yeah. Because if I like go crazy or I come up with some super stupid idea, mm -hmm. like it's not good if I can unilaterally change the protocol that everybody's using. Yes, yeah. Yep. So I think that it's important that it doesn't change a whole lot. And as time goes on, my ability to control it gets weaker and weaker, mm. right? Like on day one, if I had made a terrible decision, yeah. everybody would have just gone along with it. Exactly. Now people are more sophisticated. They know how it works. If I make a terrible decision, then it's unlikely that yeah. other people would go along with it. Yeah. I mean, that's the perfect way of thinking of longevity. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Like, I mean, for something to outlast yourself, yeah. you need to not be in control of it. Exactly. Yeah. That's the only way. I mean, things that people create that's... that's Look at Walt Disney. Look at things that just run run on their own. You know what mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's that's the only way. That's why it's a trillion dollar business because yeah, right. it runs on its own. It doesn't need nobody. Yeah, yeah. And Mickey it, Mickey uh, Mouse exists in I, all of our hearts. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like you know, it, it runs on its own. If you look at the biggest things in life, you know, they run on their own, and nobody knows. Look at the Earth. Look at everything. Me and I was talking about it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yo, nobody knows. It's the same thing with Bitcoin. Nobody knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the things that last forever. You know. Yeah. No, I mean, I think like it's like. You know, you were saying earlier, like, oh, you know, I, I like want more artists to like use this. I want more artists. Like, yeah. really, honestly, I think it was only like beginning of January of this year mm -hmm. that I feel like ordinals from a protocol level was like actually kind of final form. Yeah. Like we're close to that. Yeah. You know, like I think there was a lot of drama in like the middle of the year. Like there was many, many problems. You know. Well, but it's hard to develop when everyone's using it. Yeah. It's easy to to make new features when yeah. you can break things. There can be bugs, whatever. Because who cares? Yeah. But if there's like millions, billions dollars, whatever, yeah. you know, like going through this, like when you release it, it better work perfectly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And so it's like everything's slower. Everything takes more time. There has to be a conversation about every single thing. Yeah. I feel like it really was only like after the Jubilee that was like what early January, late December, something like that, that it was like, OK, like there might be some small things like like mostly optimization stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Like making things faster, mm -hmm. making things more efficient. 
uh, little upgrades here and there, but like, I feel like January was the first time that I actually felt comfortable going to like my artist friends and being mm -hmm. like, Hey, like you should use this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, before that it was like really wild west. Mm -hmm. It was like truly just people that were like, all right, I'm getting in there and I'm figuring wow. it out, you know? That's so it, it is like, I think early for musicians, artists, whatever to be yeah. like, like I feel like really only since January has it actually been in that state where like mm -hmm. people can really work with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's about to get. I mean, it's about to get just like really stupid again. Yeah. Like really, really stupid. Like yeah. April twentieth. Like the level of stupidity is just gonna get to full. I like could just, I could just pants imagine. on head retardation. It's gonna be <laughs> out of control. I could just so imagine this time next year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, know. I, I can't. That's no, the problem. I can't. <laughs> it's crazy. Next time we're gonna be talking about how many artists just drop their albums on there, and <laughs> songs, and yeah. Well, yeah. I wonder. I mean, even what you did, like with the four megabyte like song, right? Like the date Casey's talking about, like April twentieth. That's the the projected date for the Bitcoin having, mm -hmm. which is. Do basically you know what the having is? No, what is that? Okay, so yeah, go ahead. Bitcoin has a limited supply. Mm -hmm. It has twenty one million. Yeah. So the way that this why does it have an limited supply? Every 10 minutes, a Bitcoin block is created. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin blocks collect transactions. Mm -hmm. And so you have to wait for a transaction to be in a block for that transaction to be final. Mm -hmm. Before it's in a block, somebody can cancel it. But mm -hmm. once it's in a block, it's hard to reverse. Yeah. Because blocks take energy. You've got this like actual electricity being expended to yeah. find blocks. So they're hard to like undo. Uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. So once every 10 minutes, there's a Bitcoin block. Yeah. When the protocol started in 2009, the reward was 50 Bitcoin per block. Mm -hmm. Every Bitcoin, every, every block, the miner who found that block would get 50 Bitcoin. Mm. Every four years, that amount gets cut in half. Mm -hmm. That's so the halving. That's the okay. halving. Mm -hmm. So first it was 50, then 25, then 12.5. Uh, 12 12.5. Now it's 6.25, 6 right? Oh, wow. I and think it's 6.25. Right now, and then it's 3.125 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After April 20th, this, this three, month, three it's going to be 3.125. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. And yeah. It, it decreases like that until the year 2140. So oh. in the year 2140, all Bitcoin that will ever exist will be mined. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I, I should say, because of the fact that the amount that's created every block gets cut in half so aggressively, I think like 90 plus percent of all the Bitcoin has already been mined. Like, it's already in distribution. There's already yeah. like... But what does that affect when that happens? Or does it doesn't affect nothing? So whenever... What, what affect when what happens? Um, when, when the, um, on April 20th, right? The block reward yep. decreasing. Yeah. Block reward decreases. So yeah, really, um, the block reward was, is needed before Bitcoin had any users mm -hmm. to pay for securing the network. Mm -hmm. So it is the fact that blocks are expensive mm -hmm. that makes them hard to reverse. Yeah. So in order for miners to produce, do this very expensive work to mm -hmm. secure the network, yeah. they need to be paid. Yeah. And before Bitcoin had any users, that is the, that is the purpose of the block reward. Yeah. So for, I mean, I think for uh, a long period of Bitcoin's existence, really up until now, the main way that miners got rewarded was the block reward. Block, okay. But that is decreasing because we want Bitcoin to have a fixed supply. We yeah. don't want it to have an infinite supply. So what compensates for that is transaction fees. Mm -hmm. Users who want to get into a block, there's, I mean, uh, unless you, inscriptions are weird, but roughly speaking, you can do about two megabytes of transactions per block. Mm -hmm. And users must pay to try to get into that block. Yeah. And miners take the transactions at that time mm -hmm. that are paying the most. Mm -hmm. And those transaction fees are what secures the network. It's almost at, like printing money. What's that? It's almost like printing money. Like. It's not like printing money. It's yeah. not like printing money because they're paying Bitcoin that already exists. Yeah. The users are paying the miners to get into the block. Yeah. And miners do not make that, very, that, that much money okay. because they're spending so much in electricity and okay. hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if the, if the miners, like let's say the miners bring on twice as many mining machines mm -hmm. like today, they'll find blocks twice as fast, but they'll only find blocks twice as fast for like one week, basically. Mm -hmm. At which point the difficulty will go up and blocks will start getting slow again. So it's not even like the more hardware, the more resources the miners have, the more money they make. Yeah. It's like they get what they get 
Oh, and gosh. they are competing very hard against each other. And it's so, very competitive. Oh, wow. The yeah, miners yeah. are all competing with each other. Yeah. And that's what makes it decentralized is that like you have all these different entities that are competing against each other to mine the blocks. And so like it's very expensive to try to attack. Yeah. It's very expensive to try to create like a fraudulent transaction, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Because you have all these other players that are putting in a lot of money and yeah. they're saying, No, 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 They will call you out. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Sure. But to answer your question, like what's the importance of the having? I would say the long term importance of the having is do we get enough transaction fees mm -hmm. to pay for the security of the network? as the block reward goes down. Mm. Because that is honestly a like an unknown question. Mm -hmm. For a long time, Bitcoin did not have sufficient transaction fees to pay for the security of the network. Mm. And it's only been like recently, like if you look at a-, at a Since inscriptions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's if, not saying it that way, yeah, but it's yeah, only yeah. been since it's inscriptions. Yeah. If you look at like the history of Bitcoin like transaction fees, you'll see these like spikes where there were a lot of transaction yeah. fees. But then you'll see long periods, like three, four years, where there was like zero transaction fees. Yeah. And then inscriptions like early 2023, you see this big spike that's kept going for yeah. now. And so as, as the block award goes down, transaction fees become more and more important. Yeah. And if we don't have transaction fees, Bitcoin is not secure. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's the most important part, the security part. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what makes it good money, right? Yeah. And yeah. that's that's the bedrock of all of this. Exactly. But that's what I mean, I what I'm curious about is like a year from now, how much would it cost to make the four megabyte block inscription that you did? Yeah. Like I think it, it's transaction fees are gonna go absolutely. It's gonna insane. be unfathomably like, yeah. expensive. They're gonna like need to invent did. a new <laughs> color to display the transaction fees. <laughs> like, like, just, they're uh, gonna need an HDR monitor to like <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna burn your eyes out. And if people have a problem with that, who do they contact? Like, yo, this is not working right. No, no, there's, there's nobody. No there's nobody. There's nobody. <laughs> exactly. I was about to say, gotcha. I wanna show you, I wanna I wanna show you there's a there's a website called mempool.space. Yeah. Have you ever been to mempool.space? No. Okay, you got to do it. You should get like you should get a uh, like an LCD like screen up yeah. and have it on there. You can see like the fee rate, you can see blocks coming in. Mm -hmm. You can watch all the transactions being made. Oh wow. Like it's just fascinating. There's like it's Bitcoin has like a heartbeat. Yeah, every I look at it after this. Yeah, yeah, and you can watch it. Oh, it's that's great. crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I feel like that's like Bitcoin, like the mafia. Once you get in it, it's hard to get out. Yeah. Oh, like, it's like so a mind virus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that like when I first learned about Bitcoin, maybe for like, I mean, literally like six years afterwards, I didn't think about anything but Bitcoin. It was oh, like I tell. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, it's like, you know, this, this say if you want to, if you want to be the best at something, do something that you love, mm. you know? Mm. And I, I, that's, that, that's, that's what I see in you even when I, when I was telling my team, I was like, yo, we got to get Casey and Aaron to, to the house. <laughs> I'm like, yo, it's just, it's just y'all love it. Y'all live for it. It's just like a kid in a candy store. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I hope you can, I mean, I hope you can re reach your fans and like, um, you know, it's so hard. I think it's really confusing not understanding the difference between Bitcoin and all of the other cryptocurrency projects yeah. out there. You know what I mean? Like there's a big difference between there's 21 million and that's all they're going to be yeah. versus it's like some dog coin yeah. that somebody made yeah. and there's like a new one every week. You exactly. know? It's a, it's a, and I really don't think people like know the difference and it's hard because it's it will never get watered down because there's only so much available it's just like a real estate by the beach it's yeah. like yes exactly you know what I'm saying it's like there's only but so many houses you could buy it's until you realize God ain't make land over here no yeah, more yeah, you know exactly so, yeah so it's the same thing but I think my, my fans and I, can, I I be trying to educate them more and more that's why mm -hmm. me doing stuff like this with y'all mm -hmm. I'm learning as they learn at the same time yeah, you yeah, know because nice. you know it's, it's, it's definitely a new industry and also if this thing happened, we will be the first in history to do it. So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I generally feel pretty optimistic about the kids. You know, whenever I yeah. talk to young people, like, they usually get it, like, pretty quickly. Yeah. So, hopefully, you know. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. It's, it's going to grow. Do you have any uh, future future plans for doing something with Bitcoin? Um, right now, um, I feel like it's too early for the stuff I want to do. Uh-huh. Because the stuff I want to do got a lot to do with the music. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I just want to, you know, I want to start something that could lead to a whole music industry on mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Mm. So I think that's, because passion is my, music is my passion, mm -hmm. you know? 
So if I can't do, you know, if I can't go come into like a system where I could bring my passion in it, it's gonna be work and it's gonna be just money. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You know, so I kind of want to bring it both, and that's what I was um, talking to you about earlier. It's just like I just want to be able to see how like the Wu Tang did it, and they had like they they album and they sold just like the one master copy, uh -huh. and they did it like that, and 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 and. I feel like, what you were telling me, who's trying to do it again? Um, oh, what? Oh, I, I just know a couple people who are kind of like, they're thinking of like, they inscribe their song and then they're like, that's the rights to my song. Yeah, and it can give you the rights. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So <clears throat> I want to I bring the music into Bitcoin, but I don't want it to be mm -hmm. like that. Mm. Yeah. Because we fight so much for our rights in the music industry, you know? So I want to put it where it's just like a, 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 a streaming platform. But as also you control and still remain independent, and it's your money that you're investing in it. And I mean, that's 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 that what would I be kind of cool though if you inscribed a song and yeah. you said that's the rights to the song, and yeah. you force the record labels to buy the inscription if they want to like get the streaming yeah. revenue or whatever. Exactly, so, but. But then it's just a new owner, yeah. a new master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know and it, I mean? and like it's just like um, a song sell 20 million records and they own the rights because you sold it to them from the beginning. Well, you, th that's why you wait for what is called the right price. Yeah. But it's hard. I mean, I think the thing is like, honestly, I just think in the this age, it's like the age of information, like information will spread and information yeah. is available. Yeah. And like, I feel like kind of doing this whole thing where it's like, you know, I own this, so I control this and you yeah. can't use this. It's like, it feels like a losing battle. Like yeah. it's somewhat you need like the mob and the mafia to back that up. The best right? things are free. Exactly. The yeah. Best things are free because the more people listen to the music, is the more tours you're gonna do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The more tours you're gonna do, the more merch you're gonna do. Do you? How much? What's the breakdown between like streaming revenue, uh, tours, and merch? Which is well, the, what's the most important? Well, you take U2 for example, um, the rock band. They Gave everybody that album on 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 um, Apple. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you see, if, if you got the album. That they, the U two album. Yeah, bro, oh, yeah, I fucking I can't that. delete that album. Okay, <laughs> every time I get a new phone, I open the music app. You hit like play on your AirPods on a new phone. That fucking song plays. <laughs> I was so pissed about that. You can't delete it. You, you can't, can't delete, delete it. it. So everybody did it, and they gave they gave away the, they one you know one of the albums for free, but they. Believe it or not, that song will come on in the concert, and you just will remember it because it was stuck on your phone. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so they won. They, they, you know, they, they toured, off, off, you know, what I'm saying off that album and everything. Uh -huh. So I feel like it's the same way. If 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 there is a way, even for free, I feel like you know you make money from, you know, sponsorship, merch, and money comes from merch when you do tours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tours, you'll be able to make more money than than uh, um. They're selling records. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Because tours, you can tour every year. And when you tour, you first you start with America. Mm -hmm. You can do about 35 to 50 dates. Go to Europe, mm -hmm. Latin America, Africa, mm -hmm. Japan, yep. China. By the time you're done, <clears throat> the year is out. Yeah. Go back again and do it next year. Where's your favorite place to tour? Um, I love Dubai. Yeah? Why I Dubai? Love Cause they pay the most. They pay the most. <laughs> <laughs> Dubai, they pay the most. Uh -huh. um, um, Portugal, Paris, London. Why Portugal? I love the beaches. Yeah, beaches. See, are look, good. you gotta do it. You gotta do what you. What you gotta you be love strategic doing. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got. So this what this. So this this what I've been doing for like the past um, couple of years. Mm -hmm. I would tell my agent um, to book me in every island. So, you know, uh -huh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and in the summertime, I'll be like, yo, just do like 20 islands. And I just go, I'll perform, I make money, and I go on vacation. So that's how I've been doing it. So um, now I'm about to go on tour again on the East Coast now. Um, July, we're going on tour. So we're about to do it. But yeah, most of the money come off tour. Nice. Mm. Right. Yeah. So the more exposure you get through people listening to your music, the more that you can book tours and the bigger venues you can book and all of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah the more, yeah, then the merch also. Yeah, yeah. Do, yeah, the merch is like, merch is forever because you can have your own website. You could do the commerce and you could do the, um, you know, Shopify. Like I said, like independent artists, like there's so much money there for them. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, it's just so much money because the label is just dependent on your fan base. Yes. So, and now you can build your own fan base yeah, like through but, social but, media and everything. Yeah. But, but it was so much money in it that 
the labels came out with a clause in, in, in the um, contract to do 360 deals with artists. What's a 360 deal? A 360 deal is when they make money off everything. Ah, uh, I see. Uh huh. So they give you a certain amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Your record sales are not making them their money back. They want money from your merch. Uh, I see. They want money from your tours. Mm -hmm. They want money from whatever you sell, lollipops, anything you sell. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, we want 50 50 or 20 80. Yeah, yeah. And 360 been a thing. It's still, it's, it's still a thing. Mm hmm. Because certain artists just, you know, sometimes when they can't sell their records, they just start paying off everything else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it's, 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 I think it's like a really difficult problem and there's not an easy solution. And I, it's, I, it's like really nice to talk to you about yeah. it, you know, and kind of get your perspective on it because yeah. I feel like there obviously has to be a different way. Yeah, you know? of course, of course. And it's just, it's good to see people like trying things. I mean, my know? best, yeah, my <laughs> best advice is for artists just to um, save money. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Save money. I mean, that's invest, always our advice. Carefully. Like, I'm like, buy yeah. Bitcoin and then don't do anything with it. That's yeah, like yeah. what we're always saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. buy big, buy Bitcoin. Um, you know, um, 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 get gain capital mm -hmm. because there will come a time where you have to bet on yourself. The only way to make real money is to bet on yourself. Yeah. yeah. If somebody else bet on you, they're gonna make money off you. Yeah. You know, and 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 their structure is not gonna be reasonable, or is, and it's not gonna be fair because. Why the fuck would somebody give you money with a fair contract when they, you know, like nobody is. Like, it's not like your mother putting money behind you or like your father. These are people that don't know you and they put money. They, and honestly, all fairness to them because they taking a chance. Yeah, right. Because yeah. there are artists that come out and they never make the money back for the label. Right. So why the fuck would I, you know. So I signed 20 artists and one artist take off. And I just gave 20 artists a million dollars a piece, two million a piece. I just lost about $20 million. So when I catch that one artist, which end up being a cash cow, I want to make all my you money milk back. It, bro. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's so that's how it usually goes. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And 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 until artists really gain capital and put money behind themselves and invest and really take the losses they sell and you know, take take the full chance, I don't think you're gonna have an equal contractually safe system. Until that happened, there's gonna be slavery until then. Yeah. yeah. Stack yeah. stack sats. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. Stack sats. <laughs> yeah, stack and take chances on yourself. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. Well, this was great. Like, yeah, thank y'all for having me, man. Thank, thank you, you so much, much man. For real, this is man. Awesome. <laughs> I learned a lot. Yeah, me too, me too. Yeah, I won't be calling y'all, you know, as things get bigger and I bigger. I was gonna say we'll check in in a year and yeah, see yeah, where yeah. the fuck yeah. we all are. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, man. I need yeah. it in. This is awesome. Yeah, um, I, need it, I need it in, Casey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Me too, all right? <laughs> By the way, join the Hell Money Podcast Patreon. Yeah, but join oh. our Patreon, you know, oh. find French on Twitter, Instagram, yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. Just download his music, check out the Formagger, all Best of that. Best podcast in the world, you hear me? That's Hell right, baby. Yeah. Boom. 